there guys ken here your thrifty apprentice and welcome back to another thrifty review uh in today's quick review we are taking a look at master's touch uh fine art studio 48 color count of colored pencils um if you do not know master's touch is a house brand of hobby lobby which is headquartered here in the united states and um oklahoma however their products are white labeled and produced by factories in China. Now as to which one of those factories produces this set of pencils or their current pencils, I do not know. I just happen to know that Master's Touch and Hobby Lobby produces their own art products. Um, with that being said, I need to make the disclaimer that this review is about this particular set of pencils which was produced in 2010. Uh, with Hobby Lobby being a craft brand um, and with them using factories overseas there comes a point sometimes when they have to switch manufacturers and a switch in manufacturers can cause a difference in quality of an art product from a craft or a budget brand now this particular set was produced pre-covid um again 2010 so it's been quite some time since this set of pencils was produced although i do believe they are still selling a lot of the 2010 set in stores i just want to make it clear that this is the set we're reviewing just in case anybody becomes interested in this product all right now that that's out the way master's touch fine art studio 48 colors colored pencils the 10 says they are artist grade highly pigmented smooth lay down vibrant colors pre-sharpened break resistant with a 3.3 millimeter core lid there is some really nice artwork with a depiction of what the pencils look like inside the tin and then of course the standard little color swatching chart that you typically get on a master's touch product which isn't labeled on the front if you flip the tin over on the back you're going to get the logoing again and then you will get a color swatching which will depict the colors inside with the color name it lets you know it conforms to the ASTM D4236 regulation and that these were produced in 2010 by Masters Arch Masters Touch, excuse me, Fine Art Studio, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. It gives the website and lets you know that the product is made in China. Let's pop these babies open. So on the inside of that tin, you guys are going to have to forgive the fact that there will be light reflecting out of all of this because of how close my lights are to my camera, just how compact my setup is. So on the inside of the tin here, you are going to get the same color swatching with names that you have on the back of the packaging. Now, when I originally received these pencils, they had an acetate sheet that was on the top, which I have since removed because I have been testing the pencils. I did want to let you know that they do come with that acetate sheet on the top. Other than that, there was absolutely no other information about the pencils listed. There is no light fast information on the pencils, nor is there any on any of the packaging. Um, and unfortunately, Hobby Lobby's website does not give any in-depth information about its arts art products um so there is no like fast information that i could find or reference on there which was you know something i expected because most of their products don't now i do believe that their new series of packaging for hobby lobby um for some of their products like say the paints i know for sure the paints um come with color name light fast information and pigment information as well i don't know if the new packaging for their pencils uh, will include any light fast information um, but again i will repeat when i was in hobby lobby just a few days ago i saw several sets that were still this set on the shelf so i'm not sure if they have produced another set if they're still selling these what the case may be the 2010 set is what we're talking about today Okay, the pencils come in two trays. The trays are removable. They are your pretty standard plastic weight tray that you get in a budget grade or craft grade pencil set. Um, I wasn't expecting anything other than that. Um, it's sturdy enough to move the pencils around if you need to, but of course, I do always suggest that you be careful. Try to refrain from dropping your pencils. You never want to actually crack a lid on the inside of that pencil. With that being said, I did pick up a tip 
or a trick from Lindsay, the frugal crafter. Um, I do believe I remember her saying in one of her videos that if you microwave a pencil um, for a few seconds, it'll help refuse the lid on the inside of the barrel. Now, I don't know. I've never actually done it. Um, and I would assume that in some cases, the printing on the barrels may actually compete against the foiling rule for microwaves. I'm not sure, but I think I heard her say, I'm going to go see if I can find that video and link it in the video description of this one. Um, but with that being said, the pencils are, barrels are round, so they will roll. You need to be careful of that. Um, you can use this tin for something else if you chose to. For those people who put their pencils into uh, a separate carrying case other than the tin that it came in. Um, as I was saying, the pencils are round. They are three-toned. You get a gold and a silver tone that is completed with a color chip, which is pretty large to make sure that you can see it. Now, what I did find throughout using these pencils is that the color chipping or coating is pretty close. You know, they, they were pretty accurate, surprisingly enough, uh, for this to be a budget set. And the fact that, you know, in most cases, even with some artist sets, I've seen the color coding wasn't all of that exact. Now, with me, I typically just look at the lid of a color pencil to tell you what color it is. But I have to admit, these were not too bad at all as far as the um, color chipping on the barrel is concerned. Other than that, the barrel says Master's Touch, and there is no other information printed um, on the barrel. So, the barrel itself is domed, so you cannot see whether the lid is centered. However, another way you can tell is whether or not you have even sharpening when you're sharpening a pencil. I would also have to admit that these pencils sharpened extremely well. They hold a really nice point which was great for detailing and getting into little crevices and, and, and corners and I found that that is a really important thing for people who do color book work which we're going to take a look at um so that was I was pretty impressed and I did not have a break throughout the time of using these pencils I did not have one single lid snap on me so that was something else I wanted to definitely take note of and mention uh other than that, that's pretty much the aesthetics of the packaging and the actual barrel itself. Uh, did I want to say anything else about the uh, lid? Oh, the lid of the pencil did have a little debris. There was a little fallout. Not a lot in comparison to some other pencils that I've used that were pretty cheap. Um, but these didn't have an extreme amount of debris. They do have some, so they do have a, you know, they will smudge. So if you decide to get this set, you probably would want to put something up under your hand as you're doing your illustration or your artwork, just to make sure that you're not actually rubbing your hand through um, the pencil work that you've already done. But I would suggest it with whatever pencil set you use. So yeah, let's take a look at some of the color swatching and testing that I did on the pencils. Oh, let's see here. So I swatched the pencils out and as I told you guys earlier, um, I did a numbering system 1 through 48. Here, I did not worry about transferring the color names because I didn't think it was relevant. In all honesty, the color names that are listed on the tin are those like cutesy names that the craft companies give to colors instead of um, the artist names to help you truly reference what color you're using. So, you know, just to say that. Um, pretty robust range of colors. There's 48 of them. Um, I, I'm not going to say I felt like I was missing anything in this art, uh, in this pencil set. Uh, there was some really nice greens, which I've grown to love the range of greens that come in most color pencil sets. At first, it kind of caught me off guard the number of greens you typically get in large. This one definitely had greens in large quantity. Um, but when it comes to the fact that I, I do a lot of trees and leaves, I found that to be a great benefit. Um, there are some really nice, bright, and saturated colors in here. Now, I will say some of them were, were kind of samey. Um, I do believe that some of them possibly could have been replaced with other colors in order to just kind of round out the color selection. 
Um, but the colors that you did get were not bad. And here you can see um, I have a three layer swatch here. Um, you're gonna get um, light pressure, kind of medium pressure, and then a little heavier pressure here just to give me um, an idea of what the solid color will look like. They all blended out pretty well. I didn't have any issue with the coverage of the pencils. So the package, the packaging um, with the smooth lay down and coverage, definitely. The lids are definitely a soft lid. They're not a hard lid pencil at all, but they, they don't break easy. Keep that in mind, but they are soft. Not as soft as a Prismacolor, definitely not that soft. But um, softer than say like King Art Pro, um, I would even say they're softer than or as soft as those Prina color pencils, which was another budget set that really caught me off guard with how good the quality on it was. Um, standard cores are in these 3.3 um, meters, so they're going to fit into your average pencil sharpener. And as you saw, they do sharpen really well. I use a standard electric office depot sharpener, so I don't use anything fancy. Um, uh, to achieve that point that you saw. Uh, da, 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 da. We did a couple of blend. I did one blending ball. I really did one blending ball testing leaf color um, before I got started on a coloring book page. And we're gonna look at all of that in just a second. But I did some blending test here uh, with some different items in order to see how they would blend. The first one I did was water. I was actually super surprised <laughs> at how well these pencils blend um, with water. They move. So here you're gonna get a blend test and a, a movability test, right? To see how the pigment moved. So they blended extremely well with water. It, it blends down, it lays down into the tooth um, more than I would think it should for a pencil that is not labeled as a watercolor pencil. Um, here I use a mineral spirit, just an odorless mineral spirit. Again, um, they dissolve, it, it almost dissolved the pigment away. So they move really well with where you wouldn't have any issues at all with it. I'm getting them to accept additional layers after using a spirit. I don't think they erase as well as most pencils I've tried lately. That was the one department I feel like they kind of missed it. I don't know if the pigment is staining um, what the pigment makeup or the chemical makeup of the actual pencil lid is, but it wasn't just the red that I tested here. I noticed as I was kind of doing some erasing in the coloring book that there were some colors that you know, as long as it wasn't light pressure, you could get back to the white of the paper. But um, if there was any type of heavy pressure, it definitely stained. So maybe it's certain colors, but all around, I don't think they erased all that well. Um, it actually blended pretty well with alcohol. It moved rather well with alcohol as well. Um, I don't think they had any issues with the blending. Here I used baby oil. And to tell you the truth, of all of the things that I used to blend, I think the baby oil gave the best blending effect. It was really pretty and smooth um, without pulling any of the pigment away. I thought that was really interesting. So if I had to choose anything to blend this particular set of pencils with, it would be the baby oil. Now, of course, you do know that using baby oil to blend your pencils, you want that to be the last thing you do because I do not believe that you can layer back on top of uh, pencils that have been blended with baby oil from what I understand. I haven't personally did a composition where I had to use baby oil to blend. I typically use a spirit to blend if I'm going to blend. 98% of the time, I just simply use the pressure of the pencil with a lighter color to do my blending so yeah there you have that um so overall they blend down pretty well um they have pretty decent coverage the pencils are soft you know i think they stand out a little bit more than some of the other budget pencils however i don't think they stand out enough per se um, to be saying, oh my God, you should run out and get these pencils, especially at the price point. Let's take a look at some of the artwork that 
I did. Um, in a mixed media um, atmosphere, that worked really well. I used them in combination with, I want to say this was Marie's Masters, uh, Marie's Masters Watercolors. Um, yeah, no issues, no problem. They blended in with the colors. It was easy to match colors between the paint, which is of a completely different brand. Um, with the pencils because there was so many pencils in this set uh, to kind of choose from so they were good in mixed media they did some really beautiful coverage here in the shadow areas in order to give a little bit more body to the painting so like that and that was a hundred percent watercolor paper uh, mind you that they were uh, mixed media was done on they were swatched out on a 90 pound uh, mixed media paper here I did a standalone painting uh, with the pencils. See what? Wait, I gotta get to it. Okay, so here I did a standalone painting with the pencils where we did a spool of spools of thread. I enjoyed this. I had fun doing this one. And you know, I was trying to decide after a couple of paintings whether I like this paper, but I think it's pretty decent for color pencil work. This is Canson, um, what is this? Yeah, this is Canson Universal Sketch, 65 pounds. It took me a minute to like it, but I, I think I do. Really love the way I was able to blend with these pencils. I mean, just, just in the, the, the sharpness that allowed me to get the fine details and to really get in there and brownish and, and get down hard without breaking the lid. I was really kind of impressed with that. Because my Prisma colors, they, they <laughs> baby, they, they give you a lot of pigment and they're super soft and they cover so well, but they Prisma colored lids will snap in a heartbeat. Um, I enjoyed this. I think they worked really well here. Um, I think of everything I'm showing you, I like them, these pencils the most, just using them solo, doing an illustration, straightforward uh, artwork. Uh, I also did, decided to add coloring book pages to the color pencil test because I know that there are a lot of color book artists out there who use color pencil sets and the um, color pencil market or the um, coloring market, art market, is definitely taking advantage and gearing a lot of products towards them, including color pencils. So I wanted to start introducing a coloring page of some type into the testing for the pencils. I had fun doing it simply because it was a coloring book page. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I'm no coloring book expert by any means. I do standalone artwork. Um, I guess is I kept trying to coach myself saying it can't be any different than coloring like a stamp image when you're making a card or you're making a journal or you're designing ephemera. It can't be any different. But, you know, I don't know if it was the intimidation aspect, but I felt like it was different. I really did. Although I really had fun and I really liked the effect that I achieved. So I'll definitely be doing this moving forward to help test pencils. Now, with that being said, I am not an expert on coloring book pages and the paper, the films that should and should be on it. So I have to do some research into that so that I can, you know, definitely be able to give a, a better review on that, that particular aspect. With that said, I love the way these pencils blended. I love the vibrancy and the punch and the color that I was able to get. Now, these are a waxed base pencil. So as you can see, I did definitely get a sheen, an all over sheen, once those pencils were blended down. But I think they blended well. Now, I didn't do any highlighting um, because I'm gonna go back and do all the highlighting in the end once I finish this entire page, which I'm probably gonna, you know, be doing more of this page with testing another uh, pencil set. That's neither here nor there. Um, stay focused. So yeah, that, it turned out, I didn't have any qualms with the pencils. Um, and here, as I was showing you guys, right before I turned the camera on to do this review, I was actually coloring a stamp image. I want to work on my yellows a little more. Um, but I was using the pencils just to give me some practice in for the day. Uh, I'll, so 
that is and this is so that's coloring book page that is sketchbook paper we used mixed media paper we use 100 percent cotton watercolor paper and this is i do believe mixed media paper as well so the pencils work really well across a wide range of different type of papers um and they held up with keeping their consistency of uh, giving nice coverage being really smooth and easy to handle comfortable in the hand so i like the pencils now here's the thing i don't necessarily think i recommend the pencils though and i'm gonna tell you why i don't think i necessarily recommend the pencils because of the price point the full price on the pencils is 60 bucks of course, at the time that I bought the pencils, you were able to get them for 50% off, which made them 30 bucks. Which even at that price, I think is kind of expensive for this set when you can get that entire Prina kit at the price that you can get it. And those are some great pencils. Anybody who has ever tried these pencils have told me how much and I'm just grabbing them, how much they enjoy these pencils. And I've tried a lot of pencil sets. And I want you guys to stay tuned. Be sure that if you haven't subscribed or hit the notification bell, you do. Because we're going to be having a color pencil tour coming up next week. We're going to be having a watercolor pencil tour coming up next week as well. So we're going to take a look at all the color pencils in one video. And we're going to take a look at all the watercolor pencils I have on one video. Um, so stay tuned for that. But... This can't, this is an entire kit. You know what I'm saying? This was, this is the shebang bang. You get 120 pencils in this kit. They are really, really nice and soft. And you get color names on the barrel. You get a really nice storage kit. They are easy to sharpen and hold. Um, they are standard pencils. Uh, color coding on them was okay. You know, of course, I do suggest that you swatch out all your pencils. It's just that simple. Um, yeah, this is a much better value. If I'm not mistaken, this was 20 bucks. This may have been 30 bucks, right around the same price. You're going to get more pencils. Um, you're going to get that really nice carrying case. It came with two sketch pads, um, toned, and then one regular white. So, that's the only reason I don't necessarily suggest these pencils. Outside of that, I would suggest them. I would say get them. I mean, if you only have access to these pencils, you can't get your hands on any other ones. Um, I just don't know because the 50% off was pre-COVID. Post-COVID, they've only been running 40% off and they only run 40% off at certain times. So I just don't know if the pencils are worth that much when there are so many um budget and craft grade competitors out there that produce a really similar or just as great of a quality product um for po possibly less money so that's just my opinion you know take it or leave it that's your business <laughs> you know i love you all the same but there you have it guys um hands down I do like the pencils. I just don't like the price of the pencils. And had I tested the pencils back when I first got them, instead of having them all this time and just getting around to them, I probably still wouldn't have suggested them at that price because they're just better pencils on the mar market for a more economical price, especially if you're not getting them on a day that they're on sale and you're going to pay $60 for them. I think that's just ridiculous. Six, that, that, that price tag, that's ridiculous. No, absolutely not. So, there you have it, guys. Um, hopefully, you found some information in this review that you're going to find helpful and useful. If you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Um, share the video. Remember that sharing is caring. And maybe there's someone else out there who would love to know or need to know this information. Um, hit us up on all the social media sites and you can check out the video description for links to 
the Thrift Gear Printed's Facebook page, uh, Paints, Pencils, Pastels, and Markers, where we do all things artsy and crafty. Please feel free to join us there. Um, the, I, I want it to grow, and I want to try to pick up activity in it. Um, you can check out the Etsy shop. It does have a few items listed in it, but items are listed as I get them ready. Um, and, you know, feel free to support if you like. If not, then do, by all means, just continue to watch because I love you guys so much for being avid viewers and supporters and just taking time, a little block out of the time of your day to, to hang out with me. Um, am I missing anything? Check out the recommended product list. And remember, as I tell you guys, at the end of every single video, just keep painting and crafting.